Hey everyone, it's time to rig our Sonic model. Rigging really isn't something that I do a ton of, so I like to take the opportunity to practice rigging by hand. But there are add-ons that can help speed up the process, such as Rigify, that comes pre-packaged in Blender, which you may want to check out. Alright, let's rig us a Sonic! So let's get started by setting up the armature. To begin with, hit Shift A and add a single bone. We'll leave this bone as is to act as the base bone. Tap into edit mode and duplicate the base bone with Shift D. This new bone will be Sonic's spine, so let's move it up here and resize it to fit in his chest. Extrude another bone into his head to be his head bone. Reselect the chest bone and subdivide it twice. By default, you can bring up this menu with F3. Now it's just extruding bones. The base of the bone, which is the thicker end, acts as the pivot point for any object it has control over, so keep that in mind when deciding where to place bones. And I'll talk about this a little bit later as well, but each bone has a parent of and a child of hierarchical form, which essentially means that when you rotate like a hip bone, the whole leg rotates up as well, but if you rotate a knee, the hip doesn't rotate, unless you have like inverse kinematics and stuff like that, but I'll talk about this better in a little bit. Try to position the bone's knee joint between the edge loops. The edge loops that we specifically made for his knee joint. His shoe isn't going to deform a ton, so two bones should be more than enough. But you can go wild and put like 600 in there if you want to be weird about it. I like to add shoulder bones, just gives your arm a secondary pivot point so you can pivot from the neck or the shoulder. Then you can have your character shrug and stuff. I've also seen a lot of models where the arm bones are just disconnected and floating over here, and there is no shoulder bone. So you can do whatever works. For the arm, I'm going to do a single bone the whole length and subdivide it. I'm going to add another bone into his upper arm to help with chest deformation. So there are a lot of terrifyingly complicated rigging structures to make your characters deform more realistically, but the explanations alone would be a 15 minute video, so at that point just go over here, enable Rigify, and done. Well you still have to kind of learn how to use Rigify, there are some things that you have to do, uh, but you know, maybe future video. Anyways, the hands have a lot of joints, so they have a lot of bones in them. Which can seem daunting at first, but it's pretty much exactly the same as everywhere else. Except for, I like to enable snapping to volume. This will snap our bones to the center of our mesh's volume, which is pretty handy. <laughs> Get it? Because it's hand, especially for the thumb. Keep in mind as you go to adjust the positioning so that the base of each bone is where you want the joints to be. I use a single subdivided bone for the fingers so that each finger joint is perfectly aligned with the others. To resize the bones without ruining the alignment, change the pivot point to individual origin and scale. His knuckles could potentially have more geometry if we wanted, but there's already a lot of loops really close together, so we can probably get away without it. It's up to you. We're going to want to symmetrize our bones soon, 
This will mirror the rig for us, which is a time saver and a half. Literally. <laughs> Get it? Because it's you only got to do half, and then you just... So we're going to need to name all of our bones. Use whichever naming convention you want. Just be sure to be able to recognize at a glance which bone is which. When naming your bones, make sure to include a left side indicator on all the bones that aren't centered in your model. This way, Symmetrize will know which bones to mirror. So right now, all of the arm and leg bones just need to have something like .l afterwards. I still have to subdivide the bone in his thumb, so I'm going to do that real quick and then continue naming everything. I got a little overexcited when naming and included a dot L on my base bone. You don't gotta do that. And I'm going to add a body bone here. I don't entirely know the reason why a lot of rigs have an extra bone here, but I've looked at a lot of video game armatures and there's usually an extra bone here. I have my theories on why this might be a thing, like helping animating jumping and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure. And at this point I'm just too afraid to ask. When extruding and subdividing bones, the new bone automatically becomes a child of the previous bone. In cases such as duplication, there are no parent bone. Bones inherit transforms from their parent bone, which is why, like, when you rotate the wrist, all of the fingers move with it. There are just a couple bone parents we want to change. So in edit mode, under relations, you can change a bone's parent. We're going to want to change the new body bone's parent to the base bone. And now set the spine and hip bone's parent to the body bone. You can make rigs incredibly complicated with all sorts of crazy constraints and IK or inverse kinematics chains. This is just my very simple rig to do quick FK or forward kinematic animations. It is quicker to build this kind of rig, it is a little bit more challenging to animate though. But it's a pretty good stepping point for making a more complicated rig. You can utilize pretty much the same weighting but you gotta add like a whole bunch more bones and stuff. Also, in extreme layman's terms, FK is that the child bone inherits the parent's rotation. IK is the child bone can determine the transforms of the parent bones in the chain, utilizing a crazy algorithmic jazz. So in my rig right now, if I rotate Sonic's arm, all of the bones in his hand and fingers move, just in the exact same way that I rotated the arm. But as an IK setup, if I grabbed a finger, his elbow, shoulder, and arm could all position themselves. They're insanely cool. They're also a lot of work to set up. You may also want to add some bones to his spikes, hair, and tail. Feel free to use as many bones as you want. Oh, 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 oh,
When you're happy with your rig and everything is labeled correctly, go into the armature menu and choose Symmetrize. Now we have the armature completed and a character model, but we still have to combine them so that the armature actually does something. So in object mode, shift select all of your body objects with your rig last. Hit Ctrl P and choose with automatic weights. Automatic weights typically does a fairly good job. It's probably because of my inexperienced rigging, but I usually have a lot of weighting issues that I have to fix by hand, which takes the form of just moving around each bone and seeing what it has control over that it shouldn't and then removing that control. So let's reselect the rig, go into pose mode. And if I grab the arm bone and move it around, you can definitely see that it's got some control over the face that it shouldn't. So let's get the body objects set up so that they're easier to work with while weight painting. First, I want to make sure all of my normals are facing outward. And that none of my meshes have in front enabled. The rig, however, should have in front enabled so that it's easier to select bones. And I'm going to turn off back face calling just because. Alright, on to weight painting. It's the most kind of like tedious part. It's not really tedious. It's kind of fun, but it's also like can be lengthy and things can go wrong and then you feel like meh, you know, and it's just you gotta take little breaks. Take little breaks <laughs> while you're doing it. So select the rig, then shift select the object you want to weight paint, enter weight paint mode. When you select bones, you'll see the control they have over specific parts of the mesh. I generally start by selecting every bone and finding bones that are exerting control but shouldn't be. When this happens, tab into edit mode, make sure the entire object's mesh is selected, and hit remove over here. Rinse and repeat for every bone, for every object. <laughs> it's generally just going to happen when a bone is nearby to an object, but sometimes strange things happen. Hopefully this gives you a basic understanding on how to set up a rig for your character. Next time I'll be weight painting everything by hand, and hopefully that'll give you a good idea of how to fix any problematic areas. Thank you for watching! Please remember to like and subscribe, and maybe you want to watch a couple of other videos. We got good videos? You want to watch these? Watch our video. We also have a Patreon, where we're hosting this Sonic model for free, for everyone. So check it out! Thank you again! Stay safe! I love you all! Goodbye! Goodbye!